How's it going, Taylor? Working on the Kessel Run? Yes. Trying to make it in 14 parsecs instead. I think you can do it. And give people another two minutes and then uh, go ahead and kick off. If it just stays us three, I'll probably give a brief update on things and then I'll have to push the stuff next week. Oh, hi there, James.
Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. It'll probably be quick since we seem to have low attendance today. Um, welcome to the working group, WASM working group um, for Tuesday, July 23rd. Um, and, oh, David came in the nick of time too. Perfect. Hi, David. Um, Sorry, running a little bit better this morning. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and kick things off and um, get started through the agenda items. Um, so, uh, let me actually link that here just for like to make sure we've lazy linked for those who need it. Um, the agenda's here for today. So we're gonna go ahead and kick that off. Um, if there's anything that's missing on there, please let me know. Um, we'll, and uh, then we'll make sure we, we add stuff there. So um, first off, uh, we have some update on the OCI integration work. James is here too, so that's good. So he'll be able to help me give it from, from one side of it too. Um, I just want to update that um, I'm working on finalizing just basically this is the first um, the first uh, kind of like end to end thing of, of integrating it in everywhere. Uh, we have the rest OCI stuff um, being integrated in the cargo component. This will kind of just prove everything out from that side as well to use it to be able to download um, dependencies and stuff. Um, so I have PRs open for that and I'm working through that in, in the Byte Code Alliance with those who are responsible there. Um, I am seeing multiple lanes of interest in this. I had people asking the ORS channel as well. So I've got to respond there as well since um, I'm a part of that community. So we did that. And then um, I know that James, you have some stuff on um, how it's going in the container D space. Did you want to update on that? Yeah, so my progress there has been kind of slow. Uh, and I was actually just going to offer it up. Like um, I've had a few things come up for work and my other tasks and just want to throw out there that I, I listed out the issue here and if anybody wants to pick it up um they can i do plan on doing this at some point uh but i haven't been actually making a whole lot of progress on it so wanted to if anybody is interested in this i've got the issue there i could be happy to have a conversation and get you in the right direction um otherwise i will be picking it up again in the next few weeks um so I just didn't want to block us any further if someone thought I was doing the work and I haven't quite gotten to it yet. So. Uh, and then the other one that I have, uh, you're doing the cargo component integration is um, I own the .NET side of that integration as well. Um, so it's kind of like cargo component, but for .NET. And so that, I have an open issue to track kind of once you land, how that's going to work to do that there. So if folks are interested in that work as well, um, they could reach out to me and I can point them in the right direction. Um, uh, yeah, that's a great thing to know about James. We're working on, um, I'm doing the, uh, uh, the best I can to get through that other stuff. And then I'm going to go back and make sure we have things like the config file documented because we would like to have the config file be standard no matter which language you're in. So it'll always use the, the WASM packaging like config file format. So that'll be really nice to have like that in C sharp pretty quickly. So um, if you do start working on that, let me know. Or if someone does want to start working on that, just reach out to me and I can walk you through what it's like. It's not documented yet, but I can at least tell you like what it looks like and how it how it's there and like how it's supposed to work. So you can at least get started on it and then um, and then you can provide any feedback on on that format. So um, that is good to hear. Yeah, that's the notes right now. Um, oh, good, you added it in there. Yeah, I added the link to the issue that I opened Perfect. to track that. Perfect, that'll be real good. Um, so we'll make sure we, we help out there. And if anyone else is doing stuff in other languages, please let us know, like if you're deeply involved in any of the, the language tool chains, like what you would expect things like downloading these at the bare minimum downloading like wit dependencies there's other things like downloading tooling like actual tools that you can compile and compose in that are going to be in scope further down the line but even just like downloading wit dependencies um if you're involved in any of those language tool chains just let us know here um or bring up any discussions around it so we can make sure we help you out uh, to get in involved with all that tooling. We're just trying to make sure that tooling is at least straight, like we know it's gonna to have to be different in every language, but um, to to really like integrate in, but as long as we standardize on as much stuff as we can, as possible, um, that'll make all of our lives easier, so. Okay, that was it all, uh, with all that I had for the OCI stuff. 
um, and what James had looks like. Does anyone else have any other um, things or or any questions or or for clarifications they want on that topic? Okay, perfect. So next up um, was another thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, Luke was here oh so briefly in the call, but he might have had technical issues. Um, I have been talking with a bunch of people around WASI messaging, and I wanted to have a discussion here because there's a lot of people here um, who use messaging and or are interested in it. I was hoping we could get an even bigger group, but we do have enough here. I know that David is one of those interested parties. Um, so that's at least one other. Um, and I was just curious to get some feedback here um, because we've been trying to provide the feedback on the WASI cloud interfaces. And there's two different things I listed there. One of them is um, how we want to define the portability cr criteria. Um, <clears throat> unlike other things, you know, like HTTP or some of these basic things that were in preview too, um, a lot of the WASI cloud interfaces are a little bit different in like what, what designates their portability. And essentially it boils down to, but like I, we need to workshop these words and decide exactly what it means is that we need like essentially can a, a thing that's a component be able to talk to other systems that might not be components that talk over a messaging bus of some kind um, is, is the generic thing there. And that brought up the question of like, what does that mean? Because there's kind of two standards there. They're, I'm not, I'm not sure if they're called, no one knit me if they're not actually technically standards, but I know that they're, they're general um, agreements on things. You have MQTT and AMQP that are out there. Um, now in terms of portability criteria, I don't want to like, we, we obviously don't, we're not in that business, like pick one over the other, but I was starting to kind of centralize around the idea of that. You can't like the, the basic portability criteria is that you can, um, talk to anything that uses AMQP or MQTT, or if there's any other pro big protocols I'm missing there, um, that would be good to know. But like, if something can talk that, that this can then talk to it instead. I'm just trying to define a portability criteria um, here that, that we can, that I can more properly capture in there. And it leads to some of the other discussion items. Um, so those are the two kind of, um, the two kind of things that I, I started to consider. And I'm curious what other people think here around um, what those, what kind of thing we can use for our portability criteria, because we're trying to keep it as basic and as compatible with everything as possible, but also messaging has been a definite, uh, a definitely interesting case as I've been working through the, uh, through the different use cases. So I'm curious what people think. So there, there's been this there's a lot of work out there, uh, a lot of previous work about AMTP, MQTP, uh, back and forth. Um, how can you bridge that gap? Um, I linked one in there from Clement uh, Vasters. Um, he's at Microsoft and also one of the signatures of the AMTP uh, spec. Um, it's it's very easy to screw this stuff up without a very low level understanding of the specifications involved. Um, portability is going to be uh, difficult. Um, and it's going to be a uh, balance between functionality and portability, right? Um, the smaller the interface that we're implementing, the less functionality, the easier it is to be portable. <laughs> is there any particular area that you're concerned that you or Luke are concerned about portability? This comes down to there's there's a couple ways to approach messaging. So this is we're going to lean right into the next section in the um, in the agenda. If you've been following along there around like the request reply interfaces and then abandon and complete message. 
So to me, the more I've been looking at this, and unfortunately I have been in the docs, like I, I have been deep in docs I never thought I'd be in. Um, I've been in like AW, AWS's SQS. I've been inside of Azure message queues. I've been inside of NATS documentation and Kafka documentation and like RabbitMQ and like all sorts of stuff. And to me, this is, this, I, the problem is there's a lot of, I found out there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions about messaging that I did not know existed. But um, the the thing that it comes down to for me is the most basic core part of a messaging system is like with the, like the lowest dial down to the lowest level of guarantees is something is able to send something and something is able to receive it at least once. Like some, like it's at least once delivery is the the name of that guarantee there's no like and, and like at the this is the course and it's not the other other functionality doesn't exist but there's not this doesn't include a like accepting a message abandoning a message marking a status of a message any of that kind of stuff the most basic thing that as far as i can tell should work with pretty much any message system under the hood there might have to be some adaptation uh, like any any under the sun and then under the there's going to be an adaptation to it is that that's that's the key thing and so that a component would receive a message if it returns an error the thing providing it can decide whether that inside of that system that means acting or enacting the message or whether that just means nothing happens or whether that means something else and then it, it can receive a message and do something with it anything else higher level than that I, I've, I've toyed around with maybe having like a wasi message queue type thing but that would be something that builds on top of this like core like wasi messaging concept um where you could do things like what is called like kafka streams or a nats jet stream or like um something that's built into a lot of these queues like i think azure message queues um, if i was reading the docs right um uh, and so what i'm trying to figure out is where we set that level at because um it it plays into how request reply should work um, and it also plays into like whether or not we should have the concept of abandoned message and complete message um, inside of the interface. And so that's that's why I'm trying to figure out like where we set that up because the thing that seems to be that lowest common denominator does not include abandoned and complete. And then that's one of the reasons we also put like request reply as a separate interface, which there's another discussion there holding off on that for a second, but like that that's that's where I'm trying to figure out where we set that level. Um, Cause it seems like the basic thing, like if something else speaks AMQP or something, if I have the ability to publish a message, it should be able to get to that system still. Now I'm not going to be able to know if that message was acknowledged or completed or whatever in context of what I'm doing, but I should know that I was able to publish the message, like that the message was sent without an error and whether or not somebody received that or did that, I can listen to a subject. I can do anything else, but like, I am not going to, know anything else about it that seems to be the basis of base levels um uh so that's just some ideas there without complete or abandoned act or knack um how do you deal how do you actually have guaranteed at least once delivery um you have it's at least once oh gosh this is where you get into the concepts that are it's if something is listening, it will be delivered at least once. It could be delivered to many of those. Um, think of this more as event, like an event bus, more than stable like queues of messages, I think is one of the ways of thinking of this, right? Like, so if there's an event, anything can subscribe to that event, nothing could subscribe to that event and anything in between. And so subscribing to it is saying, I will receive a message. Um, and if you're subscribed, that it can be delivered. Like the thing is, is it's it's a very loose, and I know it is. I know it's a very loose delivery concern, but the like that's why I'm saying it feels like as someone who's trying to implement something that is a uh, generic interface across multiple systems, that that seems to be a something we could at least center around. Like the component doesn't even have to know. It just has to know that it gets the message. If you want to have something that's providing it on the other side, so let's use let's use like um, um I'm going to use like Kafka, okay? Because oh, something where it's everybody knows it, it's not vendor specific, right? I could in 
as a provider of that, someone who's actually doing it, I've implemented it in my host or I've written a Wasm Cloud provider or whatever, I can know that between that, I can I can set up the guarantees. I know that I might get, like, I might be subs uh, subscribing to a subset of things. I might be receiving certain messages or I might be ignoring certain messages or whatever. That's all inside of the thing that's providing it. But the thing, the, the business logic, the thing that this actually implements the interface it seems to be that all that matters is that it can get the message and return an error if it has a problem. Um, that seems to be the simplest way of doing it. Like to, to the business logic itself, it's more about that it receives a message. And if it receives a message, it does X, Y, or Z, and then send something. And then can it can reply in a request reply or do nothing if it just return an okay, if it has it. And then the things behind that do the adaptation. Kafka is going to adapt it. Nats, for example, won't. Um, uh, depending on which part of the Azure message stuff, it you're either going to acknowledge it or you're just going to say, okay, whatever. And then SQS, I think you just receive it and then that's it. But like, unless you do a different queue, see, it's, it's a little bit hard. The the way the um, cloud services do it's a bit different than some of the other technologies. But that's the, um, like, to me, that detail doesn't matter as much to the business logic. And if it does matter, that's why we'd want to build a higher order thing where it says, you can act or knack it, or you can like um, say like re like retry this, or you can do it. There's all the different like higher level primitives um, of a, like a queuing service that come in there. Cause this isn't, this isn't WASI queue. This is WASI message. Um, so I'm wondering just what, what people's thoughts are here. That's, that's where I'm coming at this from. Let me, let me try to break the problem down a little bit more. Let's imagine that we're sending one message to one consumer. Um, I send that message. Uh, I publish that message. Um, how do I know that that consumer ever receives it? The, the oh, the consumer on the other end. Um, that to me is more of a stream or queue than it like like I said, this is where sure. that's the next level up. Like for me, like if I'm going to put these on a level of how much guarantee there's the level I'm talking about, then yours is the next level up. It's the, like, at least I know that something got it um, right, or that something or some other system, system, right? Like the Nat stream. Right, but how can you make the guarantee? Stream. How can you make the guarantee of at least once without being able to say that the consumer handled it? The the way I've seen this work is that when you send them, the system says that I got the message and I'm publishing it out. That's all it's doing. But the the consumer of it doesn't say I did something with it. Um, okay. Yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to draw to is you can't say exact at least once, but you can say successful publish. So yes. it really comes down to how you want to describe what you're guaranteeing. Um, and, and I'm totally okay with like I I don't have I I have some strong opinions, but I'm part I I, I will park those like for the you know queuing versus like competing consumer versus uh, cooperating consumers uh, in in queuing situations. Uh, the you, you could change the conversation if the change of the conversation is we are going to guarantee publication. We can't guarantee that that's going to be handled downstream. Mm -hmm. um, however, it is in a published uh, queues uh, topic, whatever, and it can be consumed. It's there. If that if that topic is in fact durable, then you could perhaps make that argument, but you can't ensure that on the publication side that that truly was ever handled, um, which. Yeah. If you're doing transactions or something like that, like you know financial transactions or something, this could be you know a little frightening from you know one microservice saying, "Hey, I've published this thing. Um, I expect that it will get handled because it's it's in the log somewhere, and eventually you know this downstream thing's going to go and consume that." Um, but I just said okay to your your credit card expenditure. Um, whereas, like if you publish a re re reply, uh, a requ uh, request reply system, an RPC kind of system, um, the publication of the message, the handling, and then the reply indicates that, you know, the message was properly handled. 
Um, if it's not a request and reply and it's just, okay, I'm publishing this out and I need to see that that thing is absolutely handled at some point in, or the, the queue will back up and, and, you know, operations gets alerted kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and that's, so here's, here's the approach I've been taking. So I, part of the experience too, besides having been in too many docs is that um, we've been doing messaging inside of Wasm cloud for a long time using components that are using a messaging interface. And what we have found so far is that there's the core messaging part and then there's those higher level order things. So banking, the banking thing triggered this memory for me. So we created something at Cosmonic that we open source called Concordance. Um, it's out of date now, this is, this is a while ago. But the point was I wanted to do, it was event sourcing. Um, and event sourcing is very much those like guarantees. Like I better receive a message, that message better be acknowledged. It's used in banking a lot because of that, right? Like I know that I'm going to get it and then I can synthesize state from it. And for me, that seems, that was something where we just said, this is a very specific type of queuing guarantees. And so it was a separate interface. Um, and so the thing is, is it's, it's, uh, I'm not sure the, the name of the compatibility, but it's always, it's basically one-way compatibility. Plain messaging, as I described it, that you've guaranteed that you've published. I like that way of phrasing it, actually. So, like, I guaranteed publish. Um, that is compatible. That's forwards compatible, as it were, with queuing. But queuing guarantees are not necessarily backwards, using the terms very loosely here, backwards compatible with normal messaging. Um, and a lot of times, a lot of applications, just like cause even in something like, um, like a like if you're at the beginning of that flow, let's say you are at the beginning of like an event sourcing flow or a or some sort of banking flow where you need or or queuing like you're you're dispatching jobs to a queue, you actually don't really all that you care is that things were published to that queue for the most part. Now there's varying levels, but the thing is, is like a lot of things can just say. I did something and I'm letting you know I did something and here's the information. And as long as you know it published, that's all the guarantee that that business logic needs. Other things down the chain can say, I need to be able to acknowledge that I completed this work and finished everything and then do all that stuff. And so what I like, this is, this is where, this is why it's been very complex and we've been going back and forth. And I realize that's why it's been taking a while is because I'm trying to see, we need to, we need to settle on something there. And I'm like, I've been always leaning towards simplicity here <laughs> as much as possible and then adding layers on top of it because we can always add other interfaces. Like if, if so many people are like, you know what, like I'm doing at least these basic queuing operations, like I like, please just give those to me. Then we can say, oh, okay. Like resource or not resource, uh, like interface queuing or, you know, something along those lines. But yeah, that's where I'm trying to figure out. I like where you're going there. Um, the way that you're thinking about messaging, I, I think of it like UDP. You know, you're you're going to broadcast out a message. Hey, hopefully it gets there. Maybe it doesn't. We'll probably send it again if we need to. Uh, if you don't need durability, if you don't need guarantees for that message, um, and maybe durability or guarantees for a message are nice to have, um, then maybe messaging takes a slightly different, like the messaging interface is a slightly different interface than say um, <clears throat> a queuing interface, as you're saying. Um, and maybe there is a queues interface and maybe there's also um, like Kafka and event hubs. I don't look at those kind of um, collaborating consumers models as necessarily like straight queuing. Um, when I think about queuing, uh, I think competing consumer. I think uh, I have things that are popping, peaking, peak locking, not log processors. So like I would, I see these as almost three different, <laughs> uh, three different, uh, three different categories. Messaging might be just, you know, passing messages back and forth and could be incredibly lightweight. Um, queuing, we have queuing constructs. Uh, log processing, we have uh, distributed um, 
probably partitioned uh, logs where each consumer may have to keep track of where it's at in the log that it's processing, may rewind perhaps. Um, it, those are different concerns. And I think the interface would be different between those concerns. Yeah. And I think once again, all of those things, like what I like about keeping it simple is that it is the, I really need to find a better term, but I'm going to use it again, forwards compatible with the other things, right? If you want to publish to a log, you can publish using WASI messaging. Um, if like, because that, that could be something that's aggregating event streams from, you know, like take, take something crazy, like I'm going to be processing event streams from 10 Kubernetes clusters, you know, and I have a watch on those. Great. That's fine. And so this could be something else. Like you could be aggregating additional data into that stream and you don't even know. And so then like, because then that to me kind of hits the spirit of what we've been trying to do with any, like, and what we kind of tell people when they're designing their own interfaces, like build what you need. And then you can like, opt into different functionality as needed. So like you start with the least amount like of like adoption of a specific thing and then you adopt into those things and get that like lock into that pattern as you specifically and explicitly do so. Um, so the, the thing here is, um, and yeah, the, the, that Brandon, what you said in chat about the TCP, yes, that's why I think we haven't really touched TCP directly. There's just the sockets, and then you can do whatever you want on top of it. But um, the I think here, I think WASI messaging, because like I've said before, the the in practice we've had we have several different people, at least in the WASM cloud space, using essentially this very. It's even more bare bones than what we've got in WASI messaging for publishing and or receiving a message. Um, and then doing something with it, right? Because you could, if, if you think about it another way, let's say you are doing log processing or, you know, queuing stuff, like collaborative queue things, all that you would have to do is um, uh, say, like, the workers could be dumb for all intents and purposes, right? And you could have your centralizing logic be the thing that's providing the message to it. And if it, the message errors, it does all the magic it wants to do with the higher level thing, or you could want your business logic to be aware of it and to do something. And I've seen both styles of doing like collaborative work. Um, and also I think actually once in log processing where you've seen people where it's just done, like here's the log, do something with it. I'll decide what to do if you if you can't do it. Um, and so to me, that seems to be a good line to, to follow. So from at least from the people who are here, um, this is not as big of a group, like I said, as I'd hope to make sure we had a, like all the different opinions covered, but does that seem to be where maybe WASI messaging should go is that it's just like, it is the, the simplest. If you're publishing something, it guarantees that it published and nothing else and um, receiving, you have no way to indicate, like you only have a way to indicate if you have success or error doing something with it, what happens to the message after if you error is out of your hands. That seems to be the, like the most simple. And that seems to be the most like, forward compatible with everything else. If you're slotting this into a system that's already doing like the queue based delivery or whatever, then it'll still work. Um, and then if you need to, we can start creating like the queuing and the other stuff, which might be best started as maybe something that's not like a WASI one and then working on it together and then doing it as a submission as a WASI interface. Um, so that way we, we can experiment more rapidly without having to worry about phases. Taylor and I have talked too much. How about others? I'm avoiding talking because I'm not the wasm person here. So put everything out of mind in the comments. But in general, every time you try to add another one of these layers, I feel like the runtime is going to keep getting bigger and bigger as you add each protocol you want to support in one way or another. And that triggers that bloat that you're probably trying to avoid creating in the first place, the whole value of having Wasm is to not have to reinvent the whole world there. So I understand the limitations. Um, you can't throw direct access to TCP inside of a browser and let people go wild with it. Browsers aren't going to let you get away with that. Um, so I, I don't know what the right answer to this is. That's why I'm 
sitting back and letting the smart people in the room discuss. Uh, actually, Brandon, that brings up a really good point. Um, so one thing to note here is that what I think we're all pushing for, and this is actually the reason behind, I, I need to have Roman come and talk about it in depth sometime, but this is the whole reason why WRPC was put into the White Code Alliance. Uh, we, we prototyped it out in Wasm Cloud at first because we do this as it's basically plug-in based, right? Like you plug into your host what you need. Um, not that it's built into the host because building it in the host has the exact problems you're talking about. Um, and there is 100% a use case, like, cause I have Microsoft people in the room. I'll use Azure as the example, you know, like Microsoft is going to have Microsoft colon, whatever, or Azure colon, whatever with like things that have like the full API or all the guarantees that are offered by them as cloud platform. Um, and they're going to need a way to plug that in without like custom building every single like thing that's running. And so um, I think that, that that's okay to, I think, have those further things. The What I'm hoping for, I think this is something where I'm curious if this resonates with you. What I'm hoping for is that if I write, like if I have a basic piece of logic that I receive a message and I, you know, transform the data and store it in a database. We'll just, we'll keep this super simple. Um, this could be a projection and an event sourcing thing. This could be a data transformation thing that I publish it on. It doesn't really matter, but I'm, I'm going to transform the data that comes in or do or process it and add something else to it and then save it or send it on. Um, I could take something in a theoretical world where WASI messaging is at that level. I could take something that's running and I'm running it locally with something simple like Kafka or Nats and I could throw it into, you know, Azure and be using Azure messaging queue and it still works. Like it'll deliver a message to it. And then, you know, a year down the line, I'm like, I need to make this smarter. Like I want to actually like publish this thing. If it's not, if it's like not the right type of data and then return a failure or return a retry, or I want to publish this thing. And then I can say, I'm going to opt into Azure messaging, or I'm going to opt into WASI queues, or I'm going to like, whatever it might be. Um, that's what I see as the future of this is like, the bare minimal thing is that that ability. Just like with WASI key value, I can take something and say, I, I'm getting and setting a key, uh, or I'm I'm doing a, like these basic operations. But you know, now I'm running against you know like Redis Cloud, and I can opt into the, like more functionality there, or I can um, still use it, but I can start with the same thing that I was using before, um, because a lot of those people just use the core. Like a lot of business logic, as we look at it, starts with that core those core pieces of functionality and then grows outward depending on the need um, of that project. James. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely think I agree with like, there's a difference between like a simple, like competing consumer queue and like Kafka. And, and, I, and if we're trying to design something that fits across both of those, we're probably going to have some difficulty there. Um, my other question was like, so, there's um I, I don't know I've I think there's I've heard of like conversations with like collaboration with like the Dapper the um, teams and I, and I think they have some sort of like queue interface that you interact with and I was wondering like what, could we learn from their um, their implementation and and where it fell down and where it, or where it worked and if we could bring that into the interfaces that were um, looking at here. Yeah, there it is. I was about to pull that up, David, the pub sub docs. Yeah, I, um, I think, because I think pub sub is different than like what Kafka does <laughs> or, um, yeah, I mean, to, to like, like there's like nuances that there, but like, <laughs> well, when, that, when you're going that, to use one of these about things, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about is that like, the thing is, is it doesn't matter if you're using Kafka, if we keep it that bare level, that's what I'm trying to argue is that that bare level, yeah, Kafka is going to be doing some crazier stuff, but at its core, you're still getting delivered a thing with data that belongs to a specific subject of some kind. I can't remember which one it's called in Kafka because it's all mixed up in a blender in my brain. But yeah, that's the whole point is like, you can still use that, um, that core thing. There's way more that Kafka is going to do for you. But the very core thing of like, I can still send something to a Kafka queue and something can receive it if it's subbing to it on the other side.
David, with your hand up, you beat me to the unmuting of my mic. So go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, a little bit of history here. Uh, so the messaging started off as PubSub. The interface was uh, targeted uh, to almost match what Dapper had and has evolved uh, as, as more folks have gotten involved. Uh, James brings up a, a salient point. Uh, so when we look at like what Dapper does, it's pub sub, it's, it's publishing messages, it's dead letter topics, it's, it's traditional, uh, you know, queuing and subscriptions and topics. Um, not to say that it needs to be because there may be another space for this. Like messaging could be messaging. Pub sub could be something else. Log processing could be something else. Uh, honestly, I like that you, Taylor, your involvement because you're using it. You're building something that you are using and want to like take what you've done and built in in Cosmonic and and Wes, Wesenclaw and bring that over and have an interface above that because it's useful for you. It's been useful for you for building your product. Uh, to me, that makes a lot of sense. There's a space for that. It may not be pub sub, and that's okay. There's space for that too. But you're using it today. Like pub sub and damper, you know, maybe somebody's going to use it, but we don't have anybody actively using it right now in WASM. I'd much rather chase down the use case of somebody using it today that needs it and, you know, is satisfied with uh, the interactions that are available in the interface. Does that make sense? I'm curious what Brandon, it does make sense. I'm curious what Brandon has to say, and then maybe discuss that a little bit more and then cap this at 1145 so we can move on and not dry people I'm, out to death. I'm going to go completely out left field, so go ahead and finish off of uh, David's response. <laughs> okay. Um, we love left field responses. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, that that's what I'm I'm trying to base it off of, but I also like, this is, this is Taylor with his community hat on. Um, I want to make sure that it is, um, it's fitting what people need. And like I said, like, I, I think it can evolve into that. That's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure we can evolve into it. So pub sub feels like it might be part of the WASI messaging thing. It could be, could be WASI pub sub. I, I don't really care too much in the end, but I think it's, um, I think it's extendable to that. Like we can add a pub sub interface or we can add an entirely new collection of things, but I'm also trying to get to it so that we can get these core. The goal here as a community is that we have these core pieces to, to centralize around. Um, and as long as it can do that for people, that's what I care most about. And then that I'm also not, it's the whole two-way door thing. As long as I can have this be a two-way door that I can change the stuff that's what I care most about. I can work around anything else um, if we can if we can get to those two key things. So like that ma that makes sense. Like we are coming from a place of, of experience, but I also know that there are a lot of opinions on how all of this should work. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm taking those into account as we design it and not like completely make it so somebody can't use it. Yeah, I would suggest them breaking it out into two interfaces. Like there's a pub sub queuing kind of one and then messaging. I don't think you'll satisfy both worlds. So give you the end user view completely out of left field, which is I think you're creating a specialty hammer for a specific product, specific problem you're trying to solve. And I feel like users looking at this are going to say, well, I want to talk to a container registry. I want to talk to a Prometheus server. I want to query a Redis database. They're going to want to do all this stuff. And since they don't have direct access to each of those things over TCP or something like that, they're going to say, hey, I've got this hammer. I can put whatever I want through this channel. And they're going to start using it in ways you never intended for them to use, never wanted them to use it that way. Um, and so you... You think you're making something really simple that's going to be focused on the one problem you're solving. And if there's not that escape hatch to go other directions and use something that's more appropriate for the problems other people are trying to solve, you might see things being misused in ways you didn't expect them to be used. Yeah, I think that's true. And that's why I'm trying to create something that is at least usable. But I also, call me quixotic, 
but I am uh, like, that is one of the things that's always excited me about WebAssembly is you're never ever locked in to these, to these interfaces. Um, the point is you can always define your own. And I like so far, once again, one data point just from Wasm Cloud, but like pretty much any user of Wasm Cloud has defined their own interface for something. They use like three, two or three of the WASI cloud interfaces, and then they have their own. Um, and so the, I see a, a future of, of that being possible. Like I, I would, I would be surprised if someone who understood what was selling, now, obviously if you're coming in, you have no idea that you can build your own interface. This is a different story, but if you've learned what an interface is and that you can define it, like, I don't see someone coming in and saying, Hmm, I need to talk and get something from Prometheus. Let me just use this messaging interface. You know, like that's the, uh, that's the kind like, and like I said, if someone doesn't know 100%, that's going to happen. Um, but that feels more like an educational thing rather than a, a, like it's, this is the, the rule I always repeat ad nauseum in the, every sense of that word is the, um, that like it's the 80 percent use case like and and once again, it's the, it's that thing can someone take a component right we use a lot of nats in wasm cloud so let's say they're just using nats because it's already there and they're running a component wasm cloud and now they want to go run it in azure functions and they want to use that component and they're going to use azure message queue they should just be able to take that thing that was that's doing something super dumb like publishing a message not not asking for any confirmation and be able to still move that over and then be able to opt into like more complex stuff. Um, or, you know, same goes for any, any like run it in Lambda and SQS and, you know, or their Kafka shop and they want to run it with Kafka. Um, but they don't want to have to run Kafka locally. So when they're developing it locally, it could be talking to Nats, you know, with that kind of thing. You know, like there's there's all sorts of opportunities here. Um, the The whole point is that I want like that core stuff to be portable um, and then extendable. I, I'm, I'm also hoping this is the one we haven't confirmed by anything yet, but I'm hoping that a lot of these things can be used as a building block for something else. So a higher level interface might take uh, like a message resource from WASI messaging and then be able to do something more advanced with it um, because it has a handle to the resource and can basically like manipulate it. Um, so like there's, this is, like I said, call me quixotic. Maybe we'll never get there. Um, but I like, I'm seeing at least the initial start of this and that's what, like, that's why I wanted. And this, this group right here has a lot of the hands-on experience, um, in, in these things. And so I want to make sure that this group's voice is heard with whatever we do here. So it's sounding like what I should do is maybe go try to break some things up some more, um, and then be able to, it's not going to be perfect because there's some things like extending types, like that's not there in wit yet. And that'll make some of these things way cleaner to do as we split them up. Um, but I might break this up just a little bit further. And for example, put like abandon and complete message as something that's part of like, if you're, if you are acting as a, as a queue, because that was one of the suggestions as I talked with, with Luke was that like, you should, if you're going to be a queuing thing, you should implement a handle queue message instead of just a generic handle. And if you're going to be like replying to a message, you should do a handle reply. Now there's some, there's some cases there that I might go steal David to brainstorm through before we pull everyone else off to the side again. But like the, like there's a, some things there that I think might be the better way of doing that. Cause then you can specifically opt into it, but let me go try another draft of this and see what I can get to and call it good. Okay. I'm going to just stop it there unless anyone has any like big things because I knew that would be a thorny topic. But I wanted to make sure we had that this group discussion on record, you know, in our recording and with the notes so that we we had it and I could I could point back to it about the opinions and feelings of those involved. So uh, perfect. I'm going to move off to the next thing. Um, unfortunately, I think we're going to kick this again just because we don't have enough time. But um, we need to start considering as a working group, we need to make sure we're continuing to deliver according to our charter. So I'm, I'm starting to try to gather, I think we all have a, some ideas. I have a bunch of ideas, but we should start looking at, um, uh, we need to start looking at what we want to do next is the white paper. How are we going to resource it? Because we're all doing this either in spare time, maybe partially paid for by our employer or whatever, 
but I, I want to make sure we can take some time to either, you know, like work on a white paper, get some more direction, um, provide feedback for something, whether that's we all work collaboratively and say like, hey, like some people of the working group would like to work on whatever Wildy Cloud interface that isn't done and so on. Like I I'd, I'd want to make sure we can start doing that back. And I want to make sure we can have some, we had some really good things to report back to the DOC through the tag um, this past quarter and half a year. Um, I want to make sure we have those kind of put together for the next six months as well. Um, and, and be able to, to talk about that. Uh, it, that's, if we don't, then the, the working group doesn't have much of a purpose of existing. So I want to make sure we are uh, providing some of that. So if people can start looking at the charter um, that's on the, the tag, the tag runtime site, you can um, take a look and start to think about what other things we could do. Um, things can be really simple. But anything we do is something I want to make sure we capture and then and then report back on when we've done it. So think about that. I'm going to skip it mostly for now because we just took longer than than I was planning on the WASI messaging. And we also have um, the announcement side of things now. Now that we're getting to the end, Sven, you specifically brought up the LFX internship. Did you want to talk to that, or, or if you have the time, if not, one of us can do it. I'm assuming Sven might be busy, so I'll go ahead and talk to that. So today is the deadline for the um, Linux Foundation internship projects. Um, you're able to submit those. I need to grab the link back out from the channel because I forgot to put that in the document. But um, I, yeah, there it is. I'm going to put it in here in chat and then in the document. Um, so uh, that's coming up today. Why did that format so weird? Um, that's worse. I don't know. I'll figure out the formatting in a second. Or someone else can, because that's just weird um, in the notes. So this is a good opportunity. If you have any projects, I would love to see a WASM related project there. I think a lot of us are just really busy, um, you know, being in a an emerging space and so like we don't have all the throughput to maybe intern help an intern but the the lfx mentorship projects have been real cool um in the past and real good experiences for people so it's a good way to, to get some people started so if you are in the WebAssembly space and would like to do some of the things with that please uh do so um but i think it is due today so um that'd be a today thing and today only um we missed this uh, announcement before so yeah, that is it from there. Um, any other announcements um, from people in the community? Then with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up for today. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, it's great to see everyone. Uh, so like I said, next week will be the first thing on the agenda. So we do not get behind. We'll be the um, talking about what we want to do next. And that will be a group discussion to kind of decide on that. So thanks everyone for attending. It's been, like I said, great to see everyone again. So um, we'll see you all next meeting. See y'all.